guys, welcome back to a brand new video here on the channel. Today, it is another episode of Screen Use Props. Where are they now? Today, we are going to be checking out mostly the costumes from the 1996 Phantom film starring the one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend himself, Billy Zane. As promised, I'm going to be sporting my handmade, homemade cosplay uh, phantom cowl and eye mask. So I do apologize if like stray hairs come out and you see some eye makeup. I have no idea what's going on, but it's been a while since I've sported this thing, but I just wanted to do something a little bit different. Now, when it comes to the 1996 phantom film, I absolutely love it. I don't think it gets enough love. It's not out there enough in mainstream pop culture because in my eyes, I think they nailed the adventure serial aspect to a T. Not only that, the casting of Billy Zane, the production design, and of course, the costuming. The Phantom's costume, in my opinion, is one of the best examples of transferring something from the comic pages to the silver screen. And yes, it is a bit campy, it is a bit cheesy, you know, it's a spandex slash lycra look, but I reckon they did it justice with, with the insignias, with the markings and stuff like that on the bodysuit and the cowl. And we're going to be looking at some screen used suits. Nice up close, high quality photos. So with that being said, sit back, relax, snap your purple undies as we check out some of the screen use props from the Phantom 1996. Now, as always, I like to do cheeky little shout outs and whatnot at the beginning of these videos. So the first one goes to my dear friend, Michael Hare of Mad Rabbit Cosplay. Many years ago, like back in 2019, Michael sent me a care package in my P.O. box that I had at the time. He said he had some old rare Phantom Lobby cards from the film, and he also threw a little something extra in. Now, first off, here is one of the Lobby cards that I had signed by Billy Zane at Supernova at the end of 2019. So I got a few of those Lobby cards, but that's the one I wanted signed. And then here is me with the man himself. He was such a cool character, very lovely bloke. He was running late when he got to his booth. He ran all the way down the line and fist bumped everyone, apologizing for being late. I had a great chat with him. Now what Michael included in the package that was a little surprise was an original Jeffrey Boehm script, the original draft of The Phantom, when it was much more swashbuckling, had a lot more humor going on before they changed it and made it a bit more serious and a bit more dark. Now, this isn't an original type one. This is apparently a copy, but it's still cool nonetheless. It has a lot more exposition and a lot more footage of the original Phantom washing up on shore and the fight that takes place. But for the most part, the dialogue is sort of similar and pretty much stays the same. Now, this was supposedly found at an estate when they were clearing out a house in the United States. And yeah, Michael was cool enough to send me these lobby cards and also this script. So very honored to have this. I didn't realize Jeffrey Boehm, he's the guy that wrote Indiana Jones. So that's why you can see like the similarities within the Phantom and also Indiana Jones. It's crazy. Now let me read you a little excerpt. Interior, skull cave, day, drums pound. We are close on the back of a head that is sheathed in a tight fitting purple hood. Slowly the head turns towards camera. Meet the Phantom. Eyes as hard as steel behind a black mask and a jaw like granite. The drums pound. Phantom, devil. Someone needs us. Now also, I just want to touch on the very strange merchandise that came out around the film's release. Supposedly these figures were made a year prior to the film coming out. And that actually makes sense because the likeness to Billy Zane is just not there at all. It looks like a pumpkin headed man dressed as the Phantom. Even with the horse riding set, it looks like he's got the old rickets or he looks like that famous black and white photo of John Lennon. But a bit of backstory on these figures. This comes from the Phantom.fan. So the Phantom play sets were produced by Street Players Holding Corp in Los Angeles, California in 1996. Three individual play sets were produced all licensed by King Features Syndicated, themed around the Phantom movie released in 96, featuring Billy Zane. The Phantom playsets produced by Street Players Holding Corp were licensed and manufactured in 1995, however, weren't made available for purchase until the Phantom movie was released on the 7th of June, 1996. Now, of course, we've got the Phantom Rider playset, which I had. Again, the very funny Ricketts looking Phantom with no likeness to Billy Zane, except the packaging. Then I also had this particular set here, the Phantom Throw own play set. I remember dad brought this home one day and I lost my absolute shit. And last but not least, the Phantom Rings play set, which 
I actually have right here. A good mate of mine, Sam Garonda, found this at like a, a collectible flea market a couple of months ago. And you can see it's also got the original Kids Biz distribution sticker on there. Those are the guys that distributed these particular sets here in Australia back in 1996. So very cool. I used to have these when I was a kid as well, but lost them. But Thanks to Sam, I'm reunited with them once again. Now, when it comes to Billy Zane's costume, it's quite intricate when it comes to the details and the way that it was fabricated. Like it looks simple on the outside, just looks like some lycra, but it's actually a foam latex hood that's supposed to match how the lycra or the spandex moves and behaves. Purple is one of the most trickiest colors to photograph because it is constantly shifting and changing. The amount of R&D I had to put into this thing with the different tints for the urethane, it would just change under certain lighting conditions and it just would not match the bodysuit at all. But I finally honed it in and this is the final result. And it was pretty much the same for the screen used suit. Now there's a gentleman by the name of Doug Stewart who goes by Agent Brown on Instagram. He's the guy responsible for weathering most of the costumes you see in Hollywood. He weathered the Nightmare Batman costume. He did maintenance on those costumes. He even painted my screen used Robin suit. He did the painting for the suits on Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. He was tasked with doing the tribal markings on the Phantom's foam latex cow. So in an Instagram post by Doug, he goes on to say in regards to painting the cow. Many years ago, prior to me joining my local 705, I worked as a practical creature and character special makeup effects artist. A mouthful, I know. The Phantom was during that time. The deal here was unique. The costume itself was always changing color. Purple spandex, lights, shadows, angles, etc. Anyhow, the cowl was foam latex. We found out quickly that there was a need for multiple colored cowls and color shift paint. Not the best solution. The tribal design had to be carried up into the cow and they felt overall it needed an additional element. So I came up with the skull freeze, simple enough. Now it all had to be laid into the cow, which was tricky of course. The final result seemed to be all right. Mate, you're selling yourself short there because again, I just think Billy Zane's Phantom costume is a great example of transferring something from a two-dimensional comic strip to live action. And the fact that Billy Zane trained his ass off for a year, they made a subtle muscle suit for him and he was so beefy, so jacked, he didn't even need it. I mean, look at his shoulders right here, this particular shot. He has bolder shoulders, man. Now, I actually had the chance to purchase a stunt costume many, many years ago. It didn't work out because I just didn't have the funds at the time, but this was actually worn by Billy Zane's horse riding stunt double. As you see right here, you can see some nice close-ups of the actual weave of the fabric, which is quite interesting, and all that beautiful detail, those markings, those tribal markings on the costume. I love stuff like this, man. It, it was the upper piece and the lower piece there was no trunks, belt, cowl, mask, boots, any of that stuff. It was just the uppers and the lowers. It still would have been amazing nonetheless to have and have some replica pieces to complete the set. But again, it was just unfortunately way out of my price range. So we have five tabs to look at today. Some are auctions, some are just on uh, Phantom web pages. So again, this is a lot shorter of a video compared to say like The Mummy, Star Wars, Nightmare on Elm Street, Halloween, because there aren't many Phantom pieces out there. And if they are, it's pretty much just Billy Zane's costume, which is totally fine by me because I'm absolutely obsessed with it. But this again was from the phantom.fan and this is when one of Billy Zane's suits was up for auction. So the starting bid was supposedly 6,000 USD with the buyer's premium. But we can see right here, just all the beautiful detail on that suit. You can see that kind of, I don't know what you call that, the warping or the way it distorts on the camera. And that's just because of the fabric and the fabric that they use. But you can see how thin it is too. You can see the skin tone or the white tone of the mannequin bleeding through. And at some points you can see Billy Zane's own skin color bleeding through because it's such a thin uh, spandex or lycra. And that beautiful work on the belt there. And what's interesting is that it fastens at the front and not at the back. You know, in this day and age with superhero suits, we're so used to them fastening with Velcro or a clasp at the back. And then of course his foam latex cow. So this looks like two variations on a live cast of Billy. So for the most part, it was a urethane mask, whereas my one is resin because it holds its form a lot more. And obviously the foam latex cows with that beautiful tribal markings done by Doug, the man himself. So here's a cow that's sold on the prop gallery. Now this one looks a little bit different to the other ones. I don't know if it's just because it's aged a bit and we can see those details a lot more but it looks like it has been mounted on a neoprene hood, whether it's for water stuff or that's just how the cows were. But I don't remember seeing stitching like this on the main hero cows, like it could be a stunt cow, but it's also fascinating to see how that purple shifts 
you know, it's very different to how my cow looks to how this particular cow looks. So constructed from a purple pattern neoprene stretch rubber, the cow features a suede lining to the interior to ensure it was comfortable for Dane to wear for long periods of time. Okay, I've just never seen those stitch marks before. Like they're really prominent. So this is an old prop store auction of a light up golden skull of Toganda and concept artwork from the Phantom. How sick is that? What a package deal. This sold for 1,440 pounds, in my opinion, an absolute buy. And there's no description, but it's very cool nonetheless to see one of the skulls out there in the wild. Obviously, there were three when Xander Drax collects all three, and we know the fourth one was actually on the Phantom's right hand with his skull ring. Now, we've got two Heritage Auctions listings of Phantom rings. So it doesn't say exactly if these are the hero rings or stunt rings, but they do vary in details, as you can see right there. I'm no expert when it comes to the rings. Hopefully someone who watches this video is an expert when it came to the screen used rings and can shed a bit of light on that. But again, such an iconic piece to have it if it is indeed a hero one, a stunt one, you know, one of the main ones that was worn by Billy during filming. And last but certainly not least, and again, I said this would be a much more shorter video because we didn't have really much to look at, but I just wanted to have this as sort of like an appreciation video for the Phantom film. So the Phantom Billy Zane costume display. I remember when this piece was going up for auction and it was doing the rounds in the prop store's office and it's just a beautiful piece oh there we go look at that crutch shot right there so if we just zoom out just a little bit so this is mounted on a custom-made mannequin with a life cast of billy zane with his eyes shut and you can see right there the difference with the foam latex to the lycra but again i think it was such a genius design to go with these tribal markings it just makes it all the more real instead of just bland purple spandex with with no shading and whatnot so it seems like the mask is broken there and they've like repaired it so if we zoom right in so you can see the foam latex there so there's no stitching there as opposed to the other two cows with the neoprene underneath so there must be something going on there whereas these hero cows just didn't have any stitch lining and just appeared all neat. And you can see remnants of the hood under there because Billy Zane does wear a hood that is attached to the rest of the bodysuit. Look at that beautiful skull buckle, man. Even Look at the oxidizing going on there, that turquoise. I love that. Now, like I said, if you zoom right in, if we go above the buckle here, you can see how thin that fabric is. Look at that. Look at the weaving there. It almost looks like uh, Christian Bale's undersuit for the Dark Knight and the Dark Knight Rises with his bat suit that all the plating sits on. If we zoom in here, look at the beautiful work on the holsters there. Just like the, the, the embossment of the skulls. I love that. And then we've got the little elastics there that keep the holsters at bay. We go on down here, look at his boots. I've never really had a good look at his boots, actually. And they, again, just look like very period correct and just, you know... Um, hunter swashbuckling boots so let's see if the undies are replicas long sleeve a pair of trunks leggings okay so it just looks like the trunks are newer than the rest of the suit i just would have assumed that they were like replicas or something now it says that this was indeed unsold but again you don't know what to believe but the estimated bid was 20 to thirty thousand pounds that's actually not bad not too bad at all. And there you go, guys. Those were some screen used phantom props and costumes. Again, this is a lot more of a shorter video because there aren't many pieces out there. And if they are, it's pretty much just the same. It's Billy Zane's costume, cow, eye mask, ring skulls. But nonetheless, this is more of a celebration video of the Phantom 1996. I don't feel it gets enough love. I think it just had so much good going for it with the cast, the production design. They even filmed some parts of the film up in Queensland on the sound stages at Warner Brothers, which was really cool. Even Brisbane, the museum scene where Kit goes to steal one of the skulls was filmed in the CBD of Brisbane, which is really cool. And yeah, I equate the film to like The Shadow or The Rocketeer, just those good old adventure serial swashbuckling films. I think if it had a come out in the 80s, I think it would have been a much bigger hit. But to me, it's still a massive part of my childhood. And for that, I adore it. Love you guts, and I'll catch you in the next one.